So are you ready to have your digital shop up and running already? You're in luck because today we are going to create our store, add our first listings, and update our store information. It's gonna be a fairly short video today, but once it's over, we will have our shops up and running. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so we're over here in Etsy. And in order to create an account, you're just gonna come up here to sign in. And then you're gonna click register. And you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna create an account. You just need an email address, your first name, and then create a password. When creating your new store and your new account, I would highly recommend that you use a business email. Do not use your personal email. It can still be a Gmail account or Yahoo or whatever other um, provider that you use, but it should not be personal and it should definitely be a business account. So go ahead and just create, um, if you don't already have one, create a Gmail account with your business name and sign up using that. Once you have signed up for your account and you have your password entered, you can then come over here to the Your Account section and come down to Sell on Etsy. And here is where we will start to create our Etsy seller account. First thing you wanna do here is just hit Get Started. Okay, you can skip this. You can answer these questions or just to skip the questions, I am going to go ahead and skip these questions for now. Um, because I do not need them for this tutorial and then click start your shop Okay, so you're simply going to enter in you're just going to follow the instructions. It's quite easy um, You're going to enter in English United States if that's the case But make sure that you're putting in your location here Do not be tempted to put the United States in here if you do not live in the United States That is definitely going to cause you some issues in the future and it's not allowed So make sure you're using the correct address once you have all this information entered just hit save and continue And now you're going to have to enter your shop name when deciding on your name, don't just think about what you're selling now, but also think about how you might want to expand in the future. Don't make it too niche, but also don't be too generic. You want your customers to know what your business is about. If you'd be interested in a video more about how to pick your business name, then let me know in the comments section below. But for now, you just want to go ahead and enter your shop name. You can change it later. Okay, so you want to make sure that when you enter the name and you don't put any spaces in there. Uh, Etsy shop names have no spaces. So you can go ahead and type in the name that you're wanting. Let's say Heather Michelle testing and it will tell you on the bottom if it's already taken. There we go. Heather Michelle test. We're going to say for this example, but you see here, great thinking that name is available. So you may have to try a couple different things. So when you're brainstorming what it is that you want your store title to be, just keep in mind, uh, maybe make a list of multiple options for your store name. So once you're done with that, once you're all set, you can go ahead and hit save and continue. You can go change your shop name later. So don't worry too much about it. If you change your mind, I always suggest doing it sooner rather than later, but you can do that. So the first thing we're gonna have to do now is we are gonna have to create one listing. Etsy does require you create at least one listing to move on with setting up your store. So let's take one of the listings that we created in, a pre in our previous videos and let's add our pictures. You just simply click here and then you can either add in one at a time or you can add multiple at a time. So these are the three I'm going to add. You just click open and it will add them all to there. You can rearrange these if they're not in the order that you wanted. If I wanted this one to be first, you just click drag and slide it over. And you can move them around however you want. And then if you hover over, you will see some options to crop and edit and delete your photos. This is your thumbnail. That's the picture that's gonna be seen on the search results. When customers are looking, you can adjust this thumbnail here by zooming in on it and moving it around and whatever else you wanna do. And this just gives you what it's going to look like on the search. 
but I like the way that is. So I'm gonna leave that there. Here is you can, where you can add one of the videos that we created. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the video I created. If you created a video, I definitely suggest doing that. Um, if not, you could just skip it. It's not required. And here it will give you, tell you it needs to be five to 15 seconds long. While that's uploading, we come down here to the listing details. Here's your, where you wanna go ahead and you wanna enter your title. And you wanna enter who made it finished product and you want to put in here when it was made you do not want to choose made to order unless you are doing custom digital products if you choose made to order it's not going to um, allow you to upload an actual product now an actual digital file now you will have to be done later um, through the orders because that's how you would create a custom order but if you are creating custom digital products, something that you're creating made to order, then you would go ahead and select made to order there. But I'm gonna go ahead and put in the year. And now you're gonna wanna go here and you're gonna wanna search categories. So I'm just gonna hit digital stickers in calendars and planners. Then if you want to choose your primary color, secondary color, you can do so. These are not required. All of the parts of the listing descriptions or anything in here that is required is going to have this little star next to it. So these are all optional. If you want to pick an occasion or a color, you can do that. Renewal options. Now here you want to make sure it's on automatic, especially for digital products. That means as soon as somebody purchases your item, it will automatically renew and repost out there for someone else to purchase it. Otherwise, if you check manual, you will have to manually go in and redo that listing. You won't have to repost that listing. And then down here for type, you wanna make sure you choose digital. Here's description where you can add in your descriptions like we did in the previous video. I'm not gonna get into that right now. If you missed a, the previous video, go ahead and check in the description of this video and I will have that video listed so that you can go check that one out and write your listing descriptions. I will also have the video about creating your um, listing photos and videos as well. So if you missed those for some reason, just go back and check those out. Um, here is where you're gonna enter all of your tags and I really highly suggest that you use all 13 tags. And this is the tags we came up with when we, um, in the same video that we created our titles and descriptions, we also have our tags. They're just giving you an example here. It could be the color, style, function, shape, things like that. So maybe I say stickers, maybe I say habit trackers, maybe I say good notes because it goes in good notes, whatever that may be, but you can go ahead and write and just put a little comma between each and then click add and it will add all of your tags that way. Um, you don't need anything for materials because, well, there are no materials. And now we're down here in inventory and pricing. Um, this is totally up to you. It just depends on your product that you're selling. You wanna make sure that you research other competitors to see what they're charging to help you to decide what to charge. And also remember to take your labor into consideration for that. Um, especially for di digital products, you don't have any cost of goods. So your labor is basically going to be your biggest cost other than your Etsy fees. But just make sure you take into account, I do see a lot of people put their digital um, planners up there for a super, super cheap, like 99 cents. And um, I don't know why they do it because I know they're not making any money off of it um, after all their fees, but that is what some people do. Now, I don't, as of right now, you have to put in a quantity. I am not sure why you have to do that for digital products, but you, you do need to do that. So the max number of max quantity that you can have is 999. As soon as you try to get more than that, it will tell you you can only have $9.99. So I always just go ahead and put $9.99 for the products and we'll say 50 cents. We'll say $5 for the stickers. Um, so the quantities you will need to check from time to time, but $999 is a lot. So unless your product's doing very, very well, you should not have to check that for a while, but it is something you want to keep in mind. Periodically, you'll want to go ahead and adjust those quantities back up. 
Um, but you should, if for some reason you do run out, you will get a notice that one of your products has run out of inventory. Here you can enter a SKU that's totally optional. Um, since you don't actually have inventory, I don't know that this is necessary, but if you use that for some kind of analytics, then um, you may want to go in and add that. That's totally up to you. Okay, so your personalization part here is really going to be if you're offering custom order products. So whatever information that you need from your customer in order to personalize and custom make those products, and here is where you can enter that in. Right here is where you're going to put your note as to what you're asking for. If it's optional, if they don't have to give you the information, you can check this box. But I'm not offering customizable digital products. So now down here is where you can add your files. And this is what we talked about in the last episode when we created our PDFs. You can either add your files directly to here if they're all under 20 megabytes each and up to five files. Um, or you can simply add your PDF file, but either way, you would just simply click add file, find your file, and then add it to there. And then automatically, because you have it selected as a digital product, it's gonna come up as no returns or exchanges because that's what Etsy's um, default is for digital products. You see digital items aren't eligible for returns or exchanges on Etsy because of the nature of these items. While it's not possible to edit this policy, when a buyer reaches out to you, you can still feel free to resolve it as you see fit. In other words, you can still offer them a refund if you want, that's totally up to you, but this will remain this way. Um, you won't be able to change this. And then once all of that is complete, you can just hit save and continue. Once you have added your first listing, we can now continue on to the rest of the setup of your digital shop. You can add more listings now if you want to, or you can go back and add them later. We will go ahead and we will add them later. And so now here's where you're gonna enter your information as to how you'll get paid. You're going to just go section by section and enter in all of your information. I would suggest if you do not have um, a tax ID yet, which if you're just starting your business, you probably don't, you just go ahead and you leave it under individual. And then if later down the road, you end up turning it into an official business and you get your tax ID number and so on and so forth, then you can come back and you can change that to business later down the road. So just enter all of your information in here and then we can go to save and continue. Okay, so now that you have added in all of your bank information and answered the remainder of the questions that they had, um, I do wanna go ahead and show you in settings the different types of things that you might wanna pay attention to and update. Let's go to settings and we're gonna go to info and appearance. And now here in info and appearance, you have your shop name, you have your shop title, if you have like a slogan or something else you would like to say um, you can add that here here you can upload your shop icon which typically would be your logo if you do not have a logo here are a ton of free online logo makers out there you can also do it in canva as well or you can go to a site like fiverr or upwork and pay someone to create your logo for you you may even be able to try one of these new ai programs like midjourney to create the logo for you that's a whole other video in and of itself but this is where you would go ahead and you would add your icon there now this is the order receipts banner which is actually different than your store banner which i will get to in a second but this is what shows on your receipts and then we have a shop announcement down here. Um, and this is what will show um, on the top of your store underneath the banner. Come over to my shop and we see what it looks like. Okay, so we have two lines. This is where the banner is gonna show right here. This is the banner I was talking about before that is different than the, the one on the previous page for the receipt. I'm gonna really quick, I'm gonna jump into Etsy and show you how you can create the banner for here. If you're paying someone to create your logo, often you can just also have included in there that they create a banner for your Etsy shop as well. But that's if you're paying for your logo and if you wanna pay for it, it's totally up to you. Let's jump over to Canva real quick. I'm going to show you how you can go in here. You simply want to search for Etsy banner. And when you click that, all types of Etsy banner should show up here. 
with tons of different templates that you can start from and you can go in and add your own colors and fonts and pictures and let's see what size this is this is what you want to look at though the recommended size from etsy is 1200 by 300 pixels that is the recommended etsy cover banner um, some of these you might notice are a little larger they're a little bit of a different size here it looks like these are not necessarily for etsy so you just want to look for these longer skinnier banners here and when you click on it to see just make sure this is 1200 by 300 and then of course when you go in there you can update um, change things around you can move these you can change those you can change the name you can change the colors the fonts and so on and so forth but that's a really quick and easy way to make a banner um, if you want to do something quickly maybe you want to in change it down the road and you can change it as often as you want to so in order to change this banner when you get to your actual page now i do believe that it is not going to let you change this banner until you've actually gone live with your store i believe when you come to this page it's going to give you um, a thing saying that you're on vacation mode but once the store is open you can then simply come over here to edit shop and then you would come over to this little pencil in the corner here and then it will you can delete this picture you can change the layout you can update that which i don't want to do so let's go ahead and cancel um, but that's how you could go about changing your banner so after the shop announcement but you will see this message to buyer section this is for physical products under here is the one for digital items um, so if you're if i would suggest that if you were thinking to sell physical and digital products that you have those in completely different stores since we're creating a digital etsy shop we don't need to put anything in here um, down here is where we are going to have our message this is the message that's going to show on the page when they download the products so when they go to their purchases so when they go to their purchases and reviews this is where you're going to see your the, the message so when we click here this is what they're going to see when they go to their uh, purchases and reviews to download their products this is the message that they will see that is this message down here um, I can tell you I just said thank you for your purchase and I say um, how they can download the purchase I explain about how the p the pdf works and also say you know please reach out to me if you have any questions or problems and you know thank you so much and that can be whatever message it is you want to have just remember that this is the message that's going to show up on every digital product on your store no matter what the product is so this really does need to be a pretty generic message you're not going to want to have anything too specific about a particular item Okay, so any changes you make, you can go ahead and hit save changes. And now over here is the shop name, like I said before, that you can change. So if you do want to change the shop name at any point, um, if you rush just to get the store open and then you change your mind, you can do that over here. So when we go back to settings and we go to the next section here is about your shop. And you have your members here. You can add members if you have someone helping you out. Um, but here is your story. The next tab over is your story. This is what you're gonna see on your about page. You have a headline and then you have the whole kind of about me section here. You can have now have a video where you talk about yourself and your business. You can add that as well. And then you can have some extra photos where you write captions about, um, about your shop and your products. And then you can have links to social media. So we have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, a blog, and a website. So enter in any relevant information, anything you want to add. If you want to do a video, you can go ahead and fill that in. But at the very, very least, I would do this part here, um, the shop story. So moving on to the next section in options, we are in settings, we have options. And what we want to look out here, see vacation mode. Right now, yours is probably on. Um, because you have not officially opened the store yet um, and here is where you can put your announcement so when mine was not open yet it said coming soon that's totally up to you and this is an auto reply where if someone were to send you a message while you're in vacation mode 
When you're ready to open the store, you just simply say shop active, you click vacation mode off, and then your shop will be active. For the option, options section, you can read through these and kind of decide what you think will work better for your store personally. Um, some may not even apply to digital products, but these are all just in preference. So um, I'm not gonna go through each of these right now. It's really just gonna depend on your preferences and your items that you're selling. Shipping settings, those are not needed for digital products. Policy settings. Policy settings you don't really need because your digital products are going to be set with no returns and exchanges per Etsy's um, policies. Um, cancellations also are not gonna be allowed for digital products because they are available right away. If you need to or want to add any policies in here, then you can just go ahead and click create policy. And then if you click here, sample privacy policy, it's gonna take you to a section here that will explain what different policies you can have, how to write them, and some examples for them. Um, that you'll have to do a little more research on your own. Again, I think it really depends on where you're purchasing from. And that's really it. What You basically have your store set up now. When you are ready to add more listings, you just simply come over here to listings, click add, and then you will click add listing here at the top. And you can go ahead and you can add your listings anytime throughout the adding the listings part. If you want to add a new section, you can do that right from your um, listing. You can create a new section, or if you come back over here to your listing section, you can click manage sections and you can add a new section this way as well. You should be good to go. So go live with your store, add all your listings that you have. After you've added all your listings and you're ready to go, you're going to come over here to settings. You're going to go to options and vacation mode and then you're going to take it off of vacation mode and your shop will be active and you will be ready to go so now you're going to want to go back and you're going to want to add more listings i would start with a few however i wouldn't necessarily add a bunch at one time etsy likes to see that you're consistently updating your listings and adding new listings they want to make sure you're being active in your shop if you could add one item each day, that would be ideal, but it would be difficult to do. So if you can only add one every couple of days, then that would still be fine. If you sit down and you design and create a bunch of digital products at one time, say maybe you design five, instead of adding all five up at one time, maybe try to add one per day for five days in a row. You can actually, you don't have to go in there and add one every single day and create the whole listing from scratch you can go in and you can add all five as a draft and then each day simply go in and publish one per day you should try to come up with a schedule for yourself for adding new listings that you would be able to actually stick to we're going to actually talk more about this in episode 10 when we go over growing and scaling our shops so you really don't want to miss it hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't but now that our shops are open, our next step is actually marketing. This is a vital part of any business. A digital shop is no exception. In the next episode, I'm gonna give you five ways that you can market your new digital Etsy shop for free. So make sure you don't miss it, and I will see you in the next one.